Hello, I'm Peter Katz. I teach philosophy and bioethics here at CHS. Like a lot of people, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to study when I started college, but I didn't get the memo that you're supposed to change majors, so I just did all of them. I studied music, English, and history in undergrad and got a minor in playwriting along the way. I did a PhD in English at Syracuse University, um, and in that process pretty quickly realized that I actually didn't want to do English, I wanted to do philosophy, so I carved out my own weird space in that department. I was a professor of English but really philosophy for five years at another university and then I came here and made the switch completely. One of the courses that I teach is technically called critical and analytical reasoning but um, I refer to it as pain because it's a topics and bioethics course and it focuses exclusively on pain. This class came out of my research. I have a a recent book called Reading Bodies in Victorian Fiction, where one of the core things that I'm thinking about is what it means to see someone else in pain, to imagine someone else in pain, and what we're supposed to do with that when we confront pain. For this course, we walk through a history of how we've conceived of pain. We start in the 17th century, that's the 1600s, with people like Descartes, or with uh, plays like Hamlet, and then we walk our way all the way up to the 21st century and science around pain. And ultimately, we then sort of look at some case studies. We look at gender and race, and we ask, what are we supposed to do when confronted by pain? This is a, obviously, I think, a really important question for future healthcare professionals whose entire career is going to be centered around treating, if not the pain itself, the disease or etiology of that pain. So we look at a short story from Charles Dickens um, called The Hospital Patient, in which he, um, through a series of various ramblings, uh, first he starts outside of a hospital and he sort of imagines what the patients might be feeling like inside that hospital. And then from there, he's reminded of a different memory and another memory, and it ultimately takes him to uh, the bedside of a domestic abuse victim. and. He sort of watches her in, uh, engage with her abuser, uh, who's been brought there by the police, and she essentially sort of like, she, she denies that he hurt her when obviously, according to the story, he did, um, and then she dies. And this is a very strange story that I think we're, we're meant to grapple with. Um, what does it mean to see pain that we can't do anything about, right? So first of all, Dickens is imagining these hospital patients. If you are a doctor in a hospital, you simply, like, you can't treat everyone, right? There are too many people. One of the core questions of the 19th century is how do we manage a country, uh, in the case of, like, England, right, where the population of London goes from a few hundred thousand in the, the years before to over a million by the end. The, the invention of the hospital happens right around this time. It's only in 1836 that you start getting regulation of medical schools and medical education. So the idea of a hospital as sort of like a, what I call a center of affective gravity, where if you're sick or you're hurting, you think I need to be in the hospital. Like that's a pretty new idea in the 19th century. I think we take for granted that if you're hurt or injured or sick, you should go to the hospital and that in that hospital, you will be seen, not just, you know, objectively, but like, you will be recognized um, and that your pain will matter to the person treating you when in fact we also see like starting from the 19th century that tension that like your doctor does not have time to ruminate on your pain but i think we're missing something and dickens i would argue and have argued <laughs> uh, thinks we're we're missing something if we lose that that rumination um if we lose what it means to sit and observe someone in pain and really sort of meditate on that rather than simply thinking of pain as it becomes in the 19th century as a symptom and not a disease, right? It's something we manage the pain and we move on uh, pharmaceutically rather than thinking of pain as something that needs acknowledgement in and of itself. We start with me, you know, reading this arcane Dickens short story and we end uh, with an invitation for students to find an artifact in their contemporary lives and apply everything we've learned in the class. So they can historicize that, they can say, here's sort of like 
the the thinking behind all of this and where that thinking comes from they can theorize about it here's the idea of pain that they're using and what it implies for whether it's uh, the relationship between minds and bodies or thinking of patients as individuals versus statistics um, these are sort of the the core paradoxes of the class i'm ultimately optimistic about what future healthcare professionals will get to do with empathy i'm, I'm hoping that those constraints on our time will be alleviated by technology, will be alleviated by social shifts um, that allow us to recognize that like the thing you can't replace with an AI is real human empathy. Even though you're not evaluated on whether you're a more empathetic person by the time you leave my class, it seems that that's sort of always where we end up in our discussions toward the end of the semester. Um, we have learned so much more about pain and about what it means to be in pain or to see pain. And we're just confronted with the question, what, what now? Um, and so I don't have straightforward answers for that or for anything, as any student who's taken my class will tell you. Uh, but I do think that there are some scientifically pragmatic things that we can say about empathy and that there are some important philosophical things we can say about empathy that we can draw out of this class and that hopefully can make us not just more holistic and better healthcare practitioners, but maybe more holistic and better people in general. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you in Topics in Bioethics Pain at some point in your collegiate career. Tune in next time for more of a conversation about what empathy means and what it can be.